The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. All the markets picking things up in positive territory. Right now, you're looking at an S&P positive by 16 points. We were a good 20 points above the price level we're talking about right now, up to 43.40 overnight. Right now, we're trading at 43.19. Man, early yesterday, you were trading at 43.99. Quite the sell-off intraday. Yesterday, you go from about 43.74. We make a low. 4280 right into the close last night we get a little bit of a bounce on the close but you look where we are and we're basically chopping around between about 4300 and 4320 you did rise above that price level between about 5 a.m and 7 30 a.m this morning nasdaq 100 up about 48 points right now back above 14,000, 14,051. we're still talking about nearly 300 points below where we were yesterday early early yesterday dow off 100 off Dow up 150 right now at 33,418. You got the Russell up nine right now, trading at 2,015. We jumped to Bitcoin, 43,775. Quite the bop, excuse me, quite the pop in Bitcoin over the last couple of days, up to 45,000 and change. And you want to talk about pops? How about crude? 112 bucks. We're talking to our man Teddy Kegstad at 40 past the hour. He was calling for a hundred dollar oil man right past that level to 112. We'll see what his take is on that market as well as in the forex market. Coming up at 40 past the hour, uh, jumping down to gold. Gold off eight dollars. We were up overnight to a price level above 1950, right where we were towards the end of the day yesterday. You've backed off a bit. You see a little bit of selling there at about 5.30 this morning. We jump over to notes and bonds, and we're getting a little bit of a reversal of the action we had yesterday. And man, the action in the yields of the 10-year and just the price movement of the 10-year. Uh, you back things up just to last Friday, and you're talking about, no, I think you gotta go a little bit further. Let's go back. Yeah, you are talking about a move from about 126 up to 129, and right like that, we're back to 128. Folks, in the span of two or three days, we've had three points up and one point down in the tenure, all as we get Chairman Powell out there speaking today. We got jobs number, ADP today. Let's jump over to that. ADP, private payrolls, added 475,000 jobs in February. So this number, we get the non-farm payroll number in about 48 hours from now. Uh, Friday, 8.30 a.m., non-farm payrolls will come in. Wage data in the non-farm payroll report, gonna be very important. Uh, but we add 475,000 jobs in February. Now remember, these numbers diverge pretty dramatically sometimes. They did last month, uh, as you had the ADP coming in a little light, and then you had the non-farm payroll number along with the revisions uh, beating in a big way. This month, for February that is, we had 475,000. And they also revised its January count <laughs> from a loss of 301. I hadn't even looked past the headline number, folks, because the ADP is not a big moving number usually. Uh, what is up with the revision? The payroll processing firm dramatically revised its January count from a loss of 301 to a gain of 509. Well, there's the reason why, as I stated, it was so far off from the, the non-farm payroll number. Uh, what kind of revisions are you working with that you say, hey, we're about 800,000 jobs off. We didn't lose 300,000. We gained 500,000. Uh, these readings are almost worthless if they can swing that far in 30 days, right? They are. Uh, large companies and leisure and hospitality businesses contributing the biggest gains. And you get down into that number. 500 or more workers responsible for almost all of the hiring. Big companies, small companies struggling right now. Firms fewer than 50 employees recorded a loss. We'll see if those get revised. By sector, leisure and hospitality, biggest gains, increase of 170,000. Trade, transportation, and utilities, almost 100,000 added. Professional and business services contributing 72,000. On the goods producing side, manufacturing added 30,000. Uh, and as they say, though the two can differ widely, the ADP count serves as a precursor 
to the more widely watched uh, non-farm payrolls report comes out Friday. The market's looking for 440000 there. But boy, man, I think I just almost wasted 60 seconds covering this. If you're going to have those types of revisions a month forward uh, as they revise January from a loss of 301 to a gain of 509 Makes more sense with how the private, uh, with how the non-farm payrolls number came in for January. All right, what else we got going on? We got some companies with earnings, but let's jump around to some of the headlines I got going on. Uh, yeah, we've all seen it, but pretty interesting in terms of what's going on in Russia, man, just from a financial perspective. Stock markets are closed again, right? I mean, everything's basically frozen, and it seems like they're going to be getting ready to uh, pump some stimulus into that market when they finally get it back open. Uh, yeah. Russia will keep local stock trading, here we go, closed for a third day as its wealth fund prepares to deploy billions of dollars to buy the country's stocks. We'll see how that plays out. Um, I mean, it's a scary deal. I talked about it yesterday. No matter how this gets resolved, it's tough to see a good resolution at this point because Putin is so entrenched. He's got to save face. He can't abandon. Um, and when you combine that with the fact of how isolated Russia is going to be regardless of where this ends, uh, a scary proposition for the future of Russia and the Russian people. Uh, as the list of companies, I mean, what's going to happen, man? Russia's got, I think I look, I was looking up like 145 million citizens. I mean, they can't fly anywhere. They can't do business with anybody. They can't, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Not a good deal to be that isolated when you're under the control of somebody like Putin, to say the least. Has markets a little freaked out right now? Uh, okay, we jump to Mr. Jerome Powell. Powell sees Fed rate lift off in March while Ukraine fogs outlook effects on U.S. and Ukraine war. Highly uncertain, he says. Can't, can't disagree with that one, man. Lots of uncertainty right now going on. Fed must be nimble in data response, evolving outlook. I mean, just, just trying to play out the implications of oil going from 90 bucks on Friday to 112 on Wednesday. Just those implications alone are very difficult to forecast. At a time of record inflation in my lifetime, you don't need oil jumping 6% a day, 10% a day to influence that inflation even more. Now, many times when inflation has risen previously, it's been a result of energy prices. Uh, the core number this time, though, the core number is off the charts without energy and food. You add those two on top of it, the headline CPI number, uh, it is a big number. And if we start dealing with oil at these numbers, you're going to see some headline CPI numbers that persist at a higher rate than the Fed was thinking. That's going to be an interesting one to see if then they maybe go back to the core if oil's higher. But if you go to the average American, man, you got oil pushing 110 right now and war persisting between Russia and Ukraine. Not sure where that one uh, resolves itself. But yeah, Powell must be nimble in their response. With inflation well above 2% and a strong labor market, we expect it will be appropriate to raise the target range for the federal funds rate at our meeting later this month. Can't be more clear than that, folks. Uh, Powell said Wednesday in remarks prepared for his appearance before the House Financial Services Committee. The process of removing policy accommodation in current circumstances will involve both increases in the target range of the federal funds rate and reduction in the size of the balance sheet. Uh, 10 a.m. right at the end of this program, he'll start talking, but those remarks are already out. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with Kevin Inks. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We jump over to the S&Ps right now, up 17 points, trading at 43.20. We jumped to some of the companies to sprinkle them around with earnings last night. You had CRM, Salesforce, with their numbers last night after the bell. We'll get into the actual numbers right now uh, in a moment, but Salesforce up about 8 bucks. But first, we're going to jump over to our man Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market on the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network. They break down the day's market action. They bring out some great guests uh, talking defined risk, hypothetical trade setups, folks. One of the best ways I was able to learn uh, options trading. Kevin Hinks, where do we start again, man? We got earnings, we got Fed speak out there, and we got yields right back to almost 1.8%. Kevin, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, if, if anyone out there was expecting OPEC Plus to come to the rescue in terms of oil production, they just had about a 15-minute meeting and changed nothing. So if you're waiting for them to come to the rescue, that's why crude oil is currently $110. So, um, you know, it reminds me, Tommy, of one of my favorite movies is uh, Darkest Hour, the story about Winston Churchill. One of the best quotes from that movie is, you cannot reason with a tiger when your head is in its mouth, Tommy. And <laughs> so we're trying to deal from a, uh, a area of weakness when it comes to crude oil. And uh, the people that we need to help us have no interest in helping us, Tommy. You know, it's remarkable. I was reading some of uh, Fed Chairman Powell's remarks that are out before he starts talking yeah. at 10 o'clock Eastern time this morning. And he was talking about just the uncertainty, um, which is to put it lightly, with what's going on in Ukraine and Russia. And I said, man, just the uncertainty alone, Kevin, when you got oil going from 90 bucks to 112 from Friday to Wednesday, that alone, the uncertainty that that presents, let alone everything else that comes with the unfortunate situation going on over there, um, a lot of uncertainty, to put it lightly, in this market for the chairman and for this market. Uh, and, and the VIX reflecting that, man, with yesterday's action. We're still at 33.18. We were up to 35 basically yesterday. Um, yeah, so we, we have Chairman Powell today, some strong ADP number. What do you think of the revision? Did you see the revision, Kevin, of the ADP number from January? They went from a loss of 300,000 jobs to a gain of 500. It makes sense with how strong the non-farm payroll number was in there, um, but pretty remarkable. Some of the, the volatility and even the economic numbers coming out. Well, yes, of course, I saw that number. I saw it come out live, and I just spoke about it 
uh, on the air, and I can say what is going on that they missed by that much. What <laughs> I, a, a release like that where you revise eight hundred thousand jobs should come with some type of a disclosure and an explanation of how you missed so badly. Because in my view, it minimizes the effectiveness and the legitimacy of that report. How do you miss by that was a big deal when that number came in negative three hundred thousand. How does that happen? And then they revise it to plus five hundred thousand. I what we you know when I see something like that, Tommy, personally, I stop looking at that piece of data. <laughs> Kevin, you're, you're speaking my language, man. I, I let off the show and I'm going through the article. And I said, talk about Barry in the lead, right, with the revision yeah. in there. And, and then I said, folks, I probably just wasted a minute of my time talking about these numbers if that's the type of revision 30 days forward you're going to see. Because what's the point of covering the headline number, man, if it goes from minus 300 to plus 500 uh, a month in advance? So I agree. It's staggering, man. Uh, but we get the non-farm payroll number on Friday. And uh, the market waits for that, of course. We'll look for wage data. We got some companies moving with earnings already today. Uh, Nordstrom accelerating higher, man. Quite a pop for them from 19 and change up to 27 last night. You're at 24. Uh, Salesforce, some decent numbers out there as well. What are you guys going to be talking about coming up at noon today, Kevin? Yeah, we got three good names for you today. Like Folio is going to do a presentation on Best Buy. And then we're going to do Snowflake and Splunk. So nice. real good names today, second level, but still really good names today as we get to the back end of earnings season. Pretty cool, man. I got a chart of Best Buy up here on the Thinkorswim platform. You're up to 141.97 late last year. You pull back, man, and I got a Fibonacci retracement, Kevin, going from the COVID lows of 48 bucks to the high of 141, and we came within literally about a buck and a half of the 618 retracement, folks. I got it up on the chart. Uh, I like those Fibonacci numbers sometimes. I keep my eye on them, but pretty remarkable some of the retracements, Kevin, we've gotten in this market. Best Buy, one of them. Uh, I'll be watching the program to see how you guys are going to trade it, man. We appreciate the conversation, man. The education, as always, Kevin. We'll be watching at 12 noon Eastern time today. Have a great day, Tommy. Thanks for having you me You too, on. Kevin. Always a pleasure, man. Take care. Folks, tune in every trading day with everything going on right now. It is a great time to check out their program. They get some great guests that they bring on. Uh, like Folio does a tremendous job, if you've never checked it out, talking about uh, consumer sentiment. Um, Pretty cool how they break things down like Folio, especially when you're talking about the consumer side, consumer sentiment side of some of these equities as they come out with their earnings. Best Buy, we jump over to the Analyze tab. Uh, you're talking about a $10 move, so more than a 10% move priced into their numbers. You're trading at 97 bucks. Their earnings out tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, March 3rd, $10.52 move priced in for a $97 equity. And as I said, always nice when you get that type of a pullback, man. I love the 382. I love the 618. Those are my two favorites. You see that area. At least you have a plan when you have that type of price action, folks. Um, it's an area that you at least have a plan, as in your back's against the wall, the 618, trades below there. Your plan has gone wrong, and you can at least get out. You pop. Uh, there you are. You trade down to 85.58. I got on this chart, 84.08. Now, let me see pre-market where we went to, because sometimes, yeah, 82.51 pre-market to be exact okay so it does not show up some of the pre-market action when you put this thing on a weekly or a daily so actually made it down to 82 and change just below that area on the 618 before it popped uh, a lot of equities doing the same thing folks um salesforce they were out with their numbers last night i mentioned it check it out same exact formation basically you trade up from COVID lows to a high, a 618 retracement, that retracement, you just jump below that 618 briefly on Thursday morning. You've popped a bit. Salesforce was out with their numbers uh, after the bell last night. I'm going to bring up their numbers. I don't think I have it up right now. I was reading them this morning. Uh, strong numbers. Let me see if I got that. I think this was the one I was reading about. Yeah, so this is going to be some tiny text here. I'll blow it up. But they topped $7 billion in quarterly revenue for the first time. Uh, very excited about Slack was kind of the, the, the theme between the CEO uh, and chairman and founder. Is it Benoit? Mark Benoit, ben I think. Uh, remarked how acquisitions like Slap and Tableau Software, its largest acquisition until Slack, have transformed the company. Uh, yeah, $27.7 billion they spent on Slack. And they said $592 million of its $14.19 billion that it pulled from the last two quarters was from Slack. Uh, margin slipping a little bit, dropping a 15% from 198 
for the quarter, but you come in on the year at, uh, I think it was 18.7%. Yeah, for the year, margins 18.7%, and they're doing $7 billion a quarter in revenue. Uh, decent numbers, and Salesforce, you're going to trade a little bit higher on the open. We'll see how they fare on the opening bell, but Salesforce up to 215.50. <coughs> Excuse me. And as I mentioned, right back to the 618. You know, you plunge below that level on the early Thursday action of last week. There are a lot of equities, folks, that plunged through some levels last week on Thursday. But man, you look at how they performed on that day, might have found a bottom on some of these equities. Salesforce, we'll see how they open in three minutes when we come back. Market's catching a little bit of a bid in the last few minutes. You got the S&Ps back up 20 points, about half a percent. You got the NASDAQ 100 up 48. You got the Dow up 175. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back for the opening bell. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open right now. You got the S&Ps up 24 points. That's more than half a percent in the green. You got the NASDAQ 100 up about four tenths percent, trading at 14,059. Dow catching a bid up about two thirds percent, 222 points in the green. And the Russell up 16 points as well. Bitcoin, negative $375 right now, 43,910. We're going to jump to a Bitcoin story next. Uh, crude oil, 
holding pretty well at 110. As I mentioned, we talked to our man Teddy Kegstad from forex-trading-unlock.com. Coming up the next segment, folks, we'll be talking some crude. We'll be talking some forex. Uh, always interested in that conversation. Always a great nine minutes. Gold contract, giving back some of the gains. You're off 12 bucks right now at 1931. And notes and bonds pulling back right now. You're talking about a yield rising pretty quickly to almost near 1.8%. Where are we at right now? We're at 1.79%. Uh, we were at 1.7% yesterday, risk off. We were at about 2% last week, staggering, staggering moves in the 10-year. Now, what I will say is when you had the 10-year yesterday trading up from 127.06 to 128.02 at 7 in the morning, you did have some volatility, but you were back there by 1040. Uh that was an indication that things may go south with the market more so than they were at that time. Because to bring back where the market was at that time, okay, let's do it again to make sure in terms of exactly the time. Because I, I've seen it before, folks, and, and any time you see the yields move so dramatically and the market hasn't caught up yet. So at 7 in the morning, you had yields up a point and a half from where they were at 2 in the morning. So again, 7 in the morning, okay, the S&Ps... Yesterday at 7 in the morning, we're still trading at 43.40. We had another 60 points to go to the lows, folks, and we're still below where we were yesterday when the yields were at that level, okay? Something to keep your eye on. Anyway, there's, there's the chart uh, because that was quite a move. The market probably should have been down more if you had yields up that uh, The price of yields up that much, you had yields down so much. You had the price of the 10-year futures up so much, uh, and you saw that escalation pretty much all day yesterday. All right, let's jump around to some of the other stories I've got pulled up here, jumping around. Um, yeah, I mean, this headline, it's almost not even worth going into, but we know how it happens. Commodities hit new highs as traders shun Russian purchases. We'll be talking a little bit of crude coming up on the next segment. How about Ford? They're going to reorganize to run EV and engine businesses separately. They said target for 2 million annual electronic vehicles, electric vehicles, excuse me, by 2026. Uh, it's going to operate distinctly from Ford Blue in their E-unit. Uh, market probably is going to like this, folks. All right. Yeah, and you trade higher on that news. You're up by 4% on Ford because you see the acceleration that, and I'm not even talking about Tesla because we all know them, but even like Volkswagen, as they have really ramped things up, they're coming. They're coming quick with their full fleet of electric vehicles and their stock being rewarded. So uh, the newly formed Ford Model E unit will scale up the automaker's EV offerings and develop software and connected vehicle technology and services for all of the company. I mean, what's going to happen, folks, is the gas vehicles, they're going to get phased out. It's happening. So it would make sense that you have two different units, one of them completely focused on electric units, that uh, electric vehicles that will be the future. Ford's ambition will be to become a truly great, world-changing company again, and that requires focus. That's the CEO, Jim Farley. We're going all in, creating separate but complementary businesses that give us startup speed and unbridled innovation. Um, the shakeup, along with new targets for higher EV production and overall profitability, have Ford trading higher today. And we take a look at Ford. Now, talk about getting a little bit ahead of yourself here. Uh, they launched the electric truck, right? The Ford 150, the, the electric Ford 150, and the market just doubles from the span of September to highs at 2587. Quite a pullback recently, but out of curiosity, let's see where we are on a Fibonacci pullback here. We took a look at the run we had, basically started September 20th. That's quite a pullback, yeah. Um, almost a 786, that full pullback, and that is with a low of 1596. And I'm guessing if we put this on a chart, you actually made it to 1579, uh, was the low of last Thursday. So yeah, I mean, that's quite a pullback. That breaks all Fibonacci levels there. Uh, but you're sitting right at the 618, which is interesting of that entire run you had from 12 to 2587, sitting at 1767. Uh, right now, you jump over to the Analyze tab, you jump over to the Fundamentals. We're talking about a company valued at $77.0 billion. So that's quite a valuation for Ford. Um, but yeah, up 6% adding to that valuation today. Let's see how some of the other companies who had their earnings open up. Salesforce. 
they give up some of those gains on the open. You're still positive by 1.2%. Uh, we talked about Ford had their numbers. Let's see how Nordstrom's de dealing on the open. Yeah, up 30%, man. So I was reading about this again during one of the breaks during the program. Uh, key strides in its off-price rack business. I'm a big fan of Nordstrom Rack. They had a nice one in Tampa. Been there many times. Uh, and the Nordstrom Rack had been struggling because they were struggling to pick up goods when during this is during the pandemic, the rack has struggled to procure merchandise since it relies on other apparel brands to offload items to sell at clearance with less clothing inventory to go around. The company has had difficulty stocking shelves and they compete with other off price chains. TJ Maxx, Ross, Burlington uh, and Macy's Backstage. Not familiar with Macy's Backstage, but I guess trying to copy a Nordstrom rack. Uh, earnings 123 versus a buck two. They beat on revenue as well. And forecasted growth, they're going to grow at 5% to 7% compared to 2021 levels. They were looking for 3.7. The market loves that. It sees earnings, excluding the impact of any share repurchase activity in the range of 315 to 350. Market was only looking for two bucks. Um, so they beat kind of across the board there, and they're getting rewarded for that. And you got Nordstrom up 30 bucks, uh, excuse me, 30% right now, up $6 almost at 25.44. We take a look at Nordstrom on a three year weekly. And yeah, I mean, you know, if this is the turnaround, folks, they got a long way to go right now. You came into COVID at 40 bucks. You were as high as 45 early last year. Let's just see out of curiosity. I mean, probably uh, like 786 again. Yeah, another deep 786 retracement. Um, and you're sitting right at the 618 again. I don't really like trading that 786, but it is a Fibonacci price level to keep your eye on. Uh, and the market chops around there before it trades higher. But decent, decent forecast, which is what, you like to see in an equity, folks, in terms of forecasted growth. And you're talking about a market valuation right now, about $4 billion. Um, not a bad valuation. When you think about if they are going to about to turn around and ramp up their profitability in their sales, they'll start being able to procure merchandise for the Nordstrom Rack, et cetera. Uh, not a bad market capitalization to be able to grow from, especially when you got about a double that's potential if you just trade back to the highs you were at last year for Nordstrom's. All right. Let's jump down the line, see what else we got going on. We talked about Nordstrom, Salesforce, Ford. Ross Stores was out with their numbers as well. They were trading higher pre-market. They beat with uh, a buck oh four a share. Market was looking for 87 cents. They have 5.02 billion versus 4.96. That's not it. ROST, I think. There it is. Uh, you're up 8% for raw stores and pretty similar deal, right? In terms of quite a pullback for these equities as we were not quite out of COVID like we thought. I mean, recall, vaccines start coming to fruition last March, last April, people getting double vaccinated, right? We're kind of breaking back out and then we got a couple waves and we realized it wasn't over, unfortunately. And you had these stores trading back from 134 to 96. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with Teddy. Should be a great conversation. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for valued tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We've got the S&Ps right now. You're pushing up 30 points at 43.33. That's a solid 7 tenths percent in the green. And right now, folks, we got crude oil up about 6% at 109.50. We were up as high as 112.51. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. You can reach Teddy, folks, every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. I've been waiting for this one, Teddy. Good morning, man. Good morning. How about the crude market today, huh? I don't know. How about it, man? I, I haven't noticed it. Where are we, Teddy? Yeah, quite well, a market. We're up fifteen indeed, dollars listen, in, since uh, Sunday night. That's what we and are. Congrats on the the call that's been out there for longer than I can remember, man. Um, quite a market, quite a run up, and you've been talking about a hundred dollar crude for a while, and man, we mm -hmm. just blew through that remark. So give us a little take on what you're looking at for crude now that we're sitting at one ten uh, with well, everything going on, Teddy. I think we definitely have, well, after last night's speech, we know for sure now that the solidified bull rally in oil is not going to stop. It's going to keep on going in a big way, too. Like, we blew through $100. I think, you know, I said after $100, maybe we'd have some stability, you know, because people would sure. start. We're not going to have a chance for people to check their pocketbooks and not buy gas to control this, this thing. We're going up to 150 and if these policies, especially with the uh, what's going on with the Ukraine, keep continuing with the, the tone that we have right now, we'll see over $150 a barrel easily, very, very soon. So, and just um, what, I mean, what tone is that? I'm not really aware when you say that. Okay, well, you look at last night. You put We know that in the last week we put all these sanctions on Russia. We also sure. announced our country and these other countries that any country that deals with Russia, sanctions will be put on them, Correct. I mean, this is something that's been going on now for a week. They've been speaking about this. They're dealing with the banks and what have you. Sure. Well, we're in violation of our own sanctions. We're buying oil from Russia right there. So until we change that tone and stop buying oil from Russia and turn our pumps back on, this is not stopping. We're, we're paying for Putin's war right now. OK, so this is not going to stop. Oil will not go down until we start pumping, you know, and now you have China kicking up their heels. Japan's worried, you know, and they are, there's already talk that Japan wants us, you know, they're part of NATO as well, you know, I mean, they're part of this whole fight against, you know, China and Russia, supposedly. What happens when China kicks up their, hair, their heels with Taiwan, you know, are we going to help give oil to Japan? Well, no, they're going to have to deal with Russia. Where else are they going to get it from? You know, the closest place they can get it from is there, you know, so, I mean, this this is going to continue to escalate, you know, and as far as the price of oil, I can't even begin to see why it would not continue to go higher. You know, I mean, there's nothing there's nothing set right now that would do that. You know, we would have to start sure. turning our pumps, you know, they, to tell the Middle East to pump more, which they are. What's that going to do? I mean, that's not going to change things, you know. 
And as far as these sanctions, um, if you think that Putin's not selling oil to other countries, well, he's selling it to us, so he's still bringing in money, you know, and they don't deal in rubles, so it doesn't matter that the ruble's crashing, you know. I mean, you have a commodity that you have, I mean, the, the strength of the dollar right now is there, you know, and the, the biggest vulnerability we have now is that oil is helping to keep the dollar strong. Also, with our interest rate posture, that's helping to keep it strong. What happens if all of a sudden we did turn on the pumps and what have you, and the, and the price of oil collapses and gets back down to 30 bucks? What does that do to the U.S.? It's good for the consumer, but to the dollar, it could have a big impact on the dollar. You know, so then all of a sudden the dollar that starts to go down. You know, see, right now we're in an inflationary period. The dollar's strong; we can handle inflation to a degree. What happens when you have inflation and then you have a devaluing dollar? That's going to be very dangerous for our economy, especially the forex markets. Yeah, it's it's pretty remarkable everything going on right now um, with the influences, the variants, uh, the volatility, mm -hmm. and 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 crude showcasing it most. Man, um, I've talked about many times, man. It's you know of all the things going back, and I'm just. I'm just thinking out loud, Teddy, mm -hmm. the, the, the oil trade might have been the best one going back to the COVID lows, man, because you go from mm -hmm. negative 30, 40 bucks a barrel, man, and it's been basically a one-way trip up to 110 bucks. I think we've all learned a lot right. um, over the last two years about, uh, you know, unfortunately, how mm -hmm. the, the world comes out of a pandemic, man, and we were all very <laughs> wrong um, on mm -hmm. a lot of facts as we started sure. this off. Uh, sure. So. Jumping from crude, we jump to some of the other Forex markets over in the okay. world. What are you looking at with, man, it's like I, I've never experienced a geopolitical issue like this in my lifetime um, mm -hmm. in terms of just uh, everything in play worldwide, all the all the kind of players that are that are piling on and how that's impacting some of the currencies. What are kind of some of the pairings that you're looking at most this week? Uh well, this week, I'm definitely looking for the yen. The yen, I think, is going to break out to the upside finally. It's been chopping around now for the past few weeks, but with, especially with what's going on with these tensions, I would expect them to start to break out to the upside, pushing the 117, 118 barrier. Um, if we do break out to that upside level, that's a very good monthly and weekly um, breakout area also to help maintain the, the bullish trend. Um, Everything that's going into play with higher oil and, and also everything else that's going on geopolitically, this helps to keep the bull market in the U.S. dollar yen going. So I would say buy dip posture, looking for higher move highs. You know, 122 is still on my on my radar. Um, as far as the euro, that's a different story. The euro is not looking so hot right now. I think that you're going to start to see a continual erosion of the euro and starting to hit support more and more as this war goes on. Um, the Swiss ironically you know we heard what they did yesterday as far as with the russian but freezing bank accounts and what have you and stuff like yes. that um I, I don't think that that's necessarily going to be the biggest influence on their currency right now i think it has more to do with what's going on with the eu and them having to help support the eu during this uh crisis which um i don't think is going to end anytime soon you know i mean here's the one thing about russian history you have to remember um whether it's in the past hundred years or even going back hundreds of years nothing with russia ends quickly just doesn't you know so there's a lot of there's a lot of momentum on their side right now we don't need to get into the, the points of the argument but the more you know i mean especially with nato you know, the more we build up in these countries, the more of a friction point we're coming to, you know. So it's hard to ask someone else to turn around and back down when you're getting in their face more and more, you know. So, I mean, this I think these tensions are going to continue to weigh on the euro. Now, the British pound, I'd be very careful with that one. I still think that that's a neutral currency and has a potential, especially if oil continues to rally. There's a good chance that you'll see the British pound rally, actually. You know, so there's a big divergence going on in the currencies. And I would also look at the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar to continue to um, go to the upside. I think that they've rounded out a bottom. I don't think that I mean, I don't want to call a bottom. But right now, with all the influences and especially with inflation and commodity prices, as Australia comes back online and starts delivering more and more, especially to China, which is going to be consuming again at a rapid rate. These are things that are going to help with their currency. So that's why I'm very leery of what's going to happen with the U.S. dollar over the course of the next year. I think it's going to stay strong in the short run, 
but we're starting to lose strength versus some of the major currencies. So if we do have a bottoming out period with the Australian dollar per se, and also the pound, if those go against us, dollar's gonna get hit really hard. Well, Teddy, we're gonna talk to you in a week, man, and yep. uh, who knows where oil's gonna be by that yeah. point, man. But listen, we right. appreciate the conversation as always, exactly. man, and I look forward to talking to you next Wednesday, Teddy. All right, take care, Tommy. Appreciate you too, it. have a great week. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets catching a bid right now. You're pushing near highs right now. S&P's up almost 1%. You're up 9 tenths percent, trading up 38 points at 43.42 right now. NASDAQ 100 up about two-thirds percent, 14,100. Dow up 9 tenths percent, and the Russell up 1.5 percent right now, up almost 30 points. Bitcoin back near 45,000. All the markets catching a little bit of a bid. You got crude pulling back a bit at 108.72. Gold's off $13 at 19.29 right now. We got yields inching ever towards 1.8% right now, it seems, as you got the 10-year. We're down a full 26 and a half ticks right now at 127.28. You're more than a full point off of where you were trading at just yesterday. Uh, crazy action, man. You go from 2% to 1.7% to 1.8% just like that. We jump over to the VIX. Volatility index right now sitting at 32. Uh, pretty lofty level. 
probably deservedly so with the swings we're getting in this market. Let's jump around to some of those stocks that had earnings and see how they're shaking out this morning. CRM, they give it back real quick, man. Just like that, you're negative on a positive market day on their numbers to 207.67. We jump over to Nordstrom's. They gain on the open, up 33.5% for Nordstrom Ford out with, uh, yeah, as I said, market going to like that, splitting their company into two different companies with electric vehicles and gas vehicles so they can focus on electric vehicles being the future. Uh, for Ford, we also got raw stores out with their numbers. They're up 7.5% as well. Interesting action. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Amazon, basically flat down three-tenths percent right now. Microsoft shares up a solid percent right now at 297 uh, decent acceleration from Microsoft, but you got the S&Ps up almost 1% right now. You jump over to Apple shares, up about half a percent. Fan favorite Tesla, up 1.4% right now. Uh, yeah, should be an interesting day to say the least, folks. We got Chairman Powell. He starts talking coming up at 10 o'clock when our man Basil Chapman is going to be calling it live for the Tiger Technicians Hour. Don't miss his program, folks, coming up right now. After that, we got our man Larry Pesimento live at 11. Fast Market coming up at 12 o'clock. They're going to have some interesting companies they're going to break down, as Kevin talked about. Then, of course, Steve Rhodes live at 1, Dave White live at 2, and Tom O'Brien, my dad, live from 3 till 4. We got volatility, folks. Just like that, we're 13 points off the highs we just made in the last 10 minutes. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's up next. Have a great Wednesday.